Court nullifies PDP primary elections in Ogun and orders fresh exercise within 14 days. And INEC decries refusal of the APC, PDP and other parties to submit audited report. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole. The Federal High Court, Abel Kuta Ogun State, yesterday nullified the governorship uh, primary elections conducted by the People's Democratic Party in the state. The presiding judge, Justice Ogun Toibo, in his judgment, ordered the party to conduct another primaries within the next 14 days and also barred the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, from recognizing Ladi Adebutu as governorship candidate of the party in the state. Now, the plaintiffs contended that those on delegates list used by the electoral panel for the primaries were not democratically elected at the ward, local government and state congress. Well, joining us to discuss this uh, is uh, Sunday, Dr. Sunday Sholari. Um, he is the state secretary of the People's Democratic Party in Ogun State. Uh, Mr. Sholari, it's so good to have you join us. Uh, good evening. It's my pleasure. Yes. Um, the last time we spoke about Ogun State uh, PDP uh, and the situation that was um, you know, taking place, uh, I spoke with one of the governorship um, um, candidates, or rather aspirants, um, Mr. Shegun Shoumi, and he did say, he made a very serious case um, about how um, the PDP got its flag bearer. But now the court has ordered for fresh primaries to take place. Uh, what is the position of the party? Of course, the party must do what the court is saying. Um, but what's, what are the things that need to be fine-tuned, especially because the case that the, the plaintiff made was that those who were used as delegates for that election were not necessarily de democratically elected. What's the party going to do now? Well, one is surprised that um, an aspirant of the party could mislead the court by presenting false information. Um, part of what we were able to deduce from the judgment, though we are still waiting for um, the certified true copy of the judgment, where our lawyer will sit down and take a costly look or detailed look at the judgment in entirety before we we'll have informed opinion about the next line of action to be taken. But however, part of what the judge was mentioning yesterday was that the delegate used were statutory delegates, which is of, which is obviously false and outright falsehood. But however, the party is still waiting for the certified true copy of the judgment to be made available. We'll look at it. And we have two options. One of the options is perhaps to heed the order of the court. And um, the second option is perhaps to go on appeal. And um, there's no option we we'll take that the party will not be comfortable with. Um, if the primary were held under a free, fair, and transparent process, we shouldn't be afraid to have a repeated occurrence of such, you know, um, of such free exercise, you know, to be conducted. But however, like I have said, not until the certified true copy is made available, the party may not have an informed position yet to take. And, and when the certified true copy is it gets handed to you, I'm asking, I'll ask the same question I asked earlier on, will the party go as far as the local government to have democratically elected delegates to make sure that this process is free, fair, credible, and transparent, even though you're saying that a member of your political party or the two men who actually um, you know, went to court on this matter uh, seem to have lied on oath. Is this what you're saying? Yes, obviously, because similar matter had been adjudicated in the Federal High Court Abuja, and one will believe that Federal High Court is one, uh, not minding the judicial division where pronouncement is made. In um, July 29, 2022, Justice Taiwo Taiwo of Federal High Court Abuja ruled that the court lacked jurisdiction to interfere in the internal you know, um, management of a political mm -hmm. party, which of course included who will be the delegate in 
the primary election of a political party. Justice Taiwo 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 relied on a lot, I mean, avalanche of um, uh, judicial pronouncement by, you know, higher court. And it arrived at the fact that whether a delegate is correct or not, is not, you know, justiciable by the court of, I mean, by the court of law. And then uh, one wonders why such um, position is being reversed in this instant um, judgment. But like I said, however, even if the process is repeated, because let me also admit that the delegate that took part in the primaries were democratically elected. And like I said, court was being misled by saying that they were statutory delegates because the Electoral Act 2022 did not envisage participation of statutory delegates in any primaries whatsoever. And this did not, this did not happen. But however, whatever the court says, the party being an instrument of the law will obey it. Let's talk about internal democracies within the PDP in Ogun State. Uh, again, when I spoke with uh, one of the plaintiffs, uh, one of the people, members of your political party who was in, also in the running for the position of the governor, he spoke about the National Working Committee trying to weigh in on this matter, but that the state uh, was not necessarily um, welcoming um, that peaceful process. Um, enlighten us uh, as to how the National Working Committee has waded into this matter, because it seems like feathers have been ruffled and so many are uh, aggrieved within your party in the state. But the National Working Committee of the party did not show any particular interest in the affair of PDP in Ogun State. What the National Working Committee did was to conduct primaries in all mm -hmm. the states of the Federation. And Ogun State, being inclusive in this process, participated in the exercise, you know, occasioned by the <clears throat> by the timetable, you know, given by INEC and the National Working Committee. So there is no any time. You know, in the history, I mean, in this process, that the National Committee took particular interest to double into this affair. The process was, you know, not interfered with. The primary were conducted. They set up committee to come and conduct primaries in Ogun State. And this committee came to Ogun State, conducted the primary, wrote their report, issued their result, and then returned it back to the National Working Committee. And one would now wonder why it has become, according to the plaintiff, the responsibility of INEC to certify, you know, um, the result generated from nowhere because it, the communication between the commission and the political party is through the national organ of the party, and all the correspondence, you know, uh, put before INEC by the national work committee of the party is what we expect INEC to obey, and in this instance, INEC actually obeyed it acknowledge the result of congresses that were held in the state, you know, affirmed it, and, you know, uh, like I said, court must have been misled to pronounce the last judgment that it did. But we are not afraid, the party is not afraid. The National Working Committee is on part of because they were aware that the process took place under a free and fair, you know, atmosphere. And if the court, you know, so desires that the process should be, you know, reestablished, why not? We'll go ahead, having studied the satisfied true copy of the judgment that we anticipate to get tomorrow or, you know, or anytime soon. Even as the court has ordered, um, what is your party doing at the state level? And I'm talking about your chairman and the members of the executive uh, to deal with those who are aggrieved. Because again, um, today is the beginning of campaign season. And for many others in different political parties, they're already strategizing as to how their campaign would go. But then, of course, the People's Democratic Party seems to be faced with this um, issue. And then you have 14 days in which you have to conduct this primaries to make sure that it's free, fair, and credible. What moves are you making within the party to make sure that all those who are aggrieved will be uh, coming together for whoever and in support of whoever emerges at the end of the day? Well, um, so, uh, frankly speaking, the party is actually not um, happy that uh, we have to, you know, to get ourselves confronted with unwarranted distraction and um, perhaps uh, a process that we should have put behind us. We now have reason to begin to look back why we are supposed to be marching forward. But however, this will, of course, not the towers because we have set our eyes on the ball and we have charged all our members 
to, of course, focus on the common goal, which is the corporate goal of the party, that is to win and control mm -hmm. of government, you know, um, in the coming election. We have, however, been trying to, you know, um, appeal to those who could not make it to the level of becoming the candidate of the party, that is those who fail at the primaries, to let us work together. And I can tell you it has been yielding positive, you know, uh, results. Um, for, for a couple of times, we've been receiving defectors from other political parties. And I can tell you, as I'm talking to you now, there is no, you know, there is no history or event that took place in the good state where members of PDP would decamp Emmas to other political parties. Rather, we have been having, you know, members of APC, APM, uh, ADC defecting to PDP because of the seeming unity and the way the party is being managed in Ogun State. And I can confirm to you that in the couple of days, by the time we'll be out of this, you know, deliberate mischief, definitely we'll begin to embark on the same voyage of accepting the factors back into the party. There have been allegations that your, the candidate that the party um, leadership in your state had accepted as the flag bearer, which whose name was also uh, submitted to INEC, uh, seemed to have been funding the party in a way. Many have said that um, he, he seemed to have been sharing monies, hence why the party uh, decided to give him the ticket. Do you care to respond to that? Well, um, I, I, don't, I don't know anything about this. Um, Honorable Adarebutu, who is the flag bearer of PDP in the state, yes, no doubt is one of the financiers of the party, is the leader of the party. And being a leader, you have to provide leadership in all ratification. So could that you know, be that because he's a financier of the party, it was very comely and easy for the party to give him the ticket as opposed to allowing for free, fair and credible elections to happen? Okay, let me tell you this. This is somebody who had been in the party since 1998. You cannot compare his political network, his acceptability, his penetration within the party with somebody who came to the party barely three or four months ago. They are not incomparable. There is no way somebody with over two decades standing within the party will, be, will measure up you know, with somebody who had not even spent six months in the party. So if you actually want to use, you know, if you actually want the party to service you, you must have also serviced the party. So it is not a function So, So, of, so you're answering, you know, so you're buttressing my point that the party, since it has been serviced and financed, this is somewhat of a reward system, hence why he's your preferred candidate. He has a over two decade fraternity with members of the party. My, my question is, is a no, yes or no question. No, Can that is not. Me? You cannot. You can't. You can't link that directly to it. This man has suffered in this party. He has represented the party. Hence, of why you want to reward ever. him? Definitely, because he deserves it. Uh -huh. I was him. hoping for that you would give me that answer. Yes. It, it deserves it. It deserves it. it so, deserves so, so it is it true the that there were there were there was no free, fair, and credible election because the party had already decided who they wanted to get that ticket? Because the the, the delegate of the party will support a candidate that is well known to them. I am telling you that this person has related with the party for over two decades. Mm -hmm. So the other candidate who came came in fact got into the party with a nomination form. So he was not a member of the party. He does not have history in this party. However, if he wasn't a he member of your party, why let him go through the process of picking up a ticket, um, going through the whole, you know, the high jump, and then when it was time, you decided that, oh, because this guy has been funding us, let's just give him the ticket. Why, why do you say today that this other guy... It's not a member of your political party. He hasn't suffered like the other man. Is it about, is, is our political party supposed to be a reward system of, of sorts? What about allowing for free, fair, and credible elections so that the people who will eventually vote for you can also understand that there is some form of internal democracy? If you can't do that, why should people vote for you? No, where do you put the position of long service? You know, there's no way you compare somebody who had enjoyed long service in the party with somebody who just came into the party. Whoever just, you know, um, came into the party should be patient. Of course, if he participated in the primary, he could have won if he had been able to get himself well acquainted with delegates who 
were supposed to vote for him. So this is not a question of somebody. It's a, it's a, it's a matter of long service. You know, there is no way the party will have been will have made a mistake of nominating somebody who they have not known. You see, you know, we cannot do all the. We have to look at certain criteria. And like I told you, long service. You know, um, long service. You know, uh, and that like, are able to the ticket that he got, not because he spent or he has spent uh, Jimmy Lawa. Jimmy Lawa also put his money to it. The okay. party has a principle of free entry and exit. Anybody can join the party at any particular point in time, and you will also be accorded the right and privileges that is also available to somebody who had been in the party for from time immemorial. But that notwithstanding, when it now comes to the mandate of the party, you will not want to give your vehicle to a driver that you are not very sure of his driving skill, and you are not also quite sure of his ability to navigate so, you know, the road very well. Finally, so, just, just work with me here. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Shalari, but just just work with me here. I want I want to paint a scenario. So you're telling me that, for example, I join, let's say, the PDP in Ogun State. All I need to do is fund the party. Be a long-standing member. Now, my credibility, my ability to deliver on dividends of democracy or even have any form of leadership skills may not matter, but then long service is what is your priority. Help me understand this, please. This can only be established if you have, you know, if you have an endurance history of all of it. There's no way you can establish this factor you have just mentioned by spontaneous action. So... It is true observation, it is true your character, it is true your steadiness, it is true your emotional stability and your ability to have been identified with the party during the time of trouble. So it is not sufficient for us to say that somebody who just came and you have not been able to examine him, you do not have his history, and you will now say, okay, let us now ask this person. Because, for example, like I just gave an analogy, you cannot give your vehicle to a driver that you are not sure of his driving skill and you are not sure of his ability to navigate the road. And you can only know this via the experience that you have. And experience is what we have been talking about. Okay. We now have a candidate who has not even had an experience or is an history of one more standing in the party. You know, PDP is a major political party and political leaders will not take such gamble. He has never stood for any election once, There's, I mean, let alone winning one. So we also have to look at the political marketability of the candidate of the party because that is going to be the image of the party and the other ego of the party during election. So okay. we have to consider a lot of factors. And when you now look at all of this, I can tell you that on a blood that they able to stand shoulder high more than any other person. And let me say this, one of the reasons why the party has feel ready is that this man has an history of over three decade consecutive habitation in Ogun State. He has dwelt wine and dine with people of Ogun State. They know him and they can entrust into his hand their mandate. So we have looked at all of this and he, because of, of course within the party and outside the party, he has the widest political network that the party can leverage on to win election. Well, um, we're looking forward to, uh, of course, the 14-day ultimatum that the court has given to the party and what comes off it. Uh, we'll be watching and uh, we wish you all the best of luck. Uh, hopefully you'll come back to us and give us uh, feedback on what happened. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure being with you this evening. All right. Dr. Sunday Shalari is the State Secretary of the People's Democratic Party in Ogun State. Well, uh, we'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be talking about the refusal of political parties to submit audited reports to INEC. Now, INEC obviously is worried about this. We'll be right back. Stay with us.